Welcome back to 20storms.com. I am Jason Moreland with your latest weather update for January 31st, 2011. We have a major storm system about to come through the central United States. Let's get right down into it. This is the latest water vapor image for much of the central United States. As you will notice, there is a major trough that's about to dive all the way across the central United States. As you can see, the short wave is now progressing eastward through that long wave trough. And as a result, we're starting to have surface low formation in central and southwest Texas. Um, as you can see here, we have a pretty strong temperature gradient with temperatures in the teens in the northern half of the Texas Panhandle, whereas Gulf Coast areas of Texas are experiencing temperatures in the mid to upper 60s with dew points in the lower 60s. If you look really closely here, we see low pressure beginning to form along the Rio Grande Valley, and that is exactly what some of the models are showing. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and start this at zero hour and work our way forward into time. Okay, this is currently zero hour, and as we see, the surface low is beginning to form near the Texas-Mexican line. And as we progress through time, this erupts into a major storm for much of the central United States. We have the potential for a couple isolated tornadoes and damaging winds ahead of a squall line tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours, which is Tuesday. And also behind this low pressure center on the cold side, we have the potential for an epic blizzard condition set up for much of Oklahoma, Missouri, portions of Illinois, Indiana, etc., etc. Also, here's the latest forecast from the GFS in terms of snowfall accumulation. This map pretty much speaks for itself. This is the real deal, folks, okay? We have significant snowfall forecast totals over the next few days. We're talking in upwards of over 18 inches of snow in portions of states such as northeast Oklahoma, Missouri, central and northern Illinois, into the Midwest and, well, not so much the Midwest, but the Ohio Valley across Indiana and portions of Ohio with a secondary maximum across the northeast in a few days. Here is a look at the 0Z NAM forecast snow depth, and this is at zero hour. Notice how much of the area that's going to be impacted has little to no snow cover based on this model solution as of the current time frame. But let's look at what it shows for 48 hours out. Look at the snow depth. We're looking at snowfall accumulation totals of 12 to 20 inch plus areas along this swath here, the aforementioned swath with the much, most snowfall on the northwest side of that surface low pressure center. This map is also a good representation, representation, and this is from the National Weather Service. And basically, we have much of the central United States outlined under blizzard storm warnings or winter storm warnings. And then out behind this, we have wind chill advisories for much of the Dakotas and northern plains. So this is dangerously cold weather, not to mention all the blizzard conditions that are going to come in before all that significantly cold air comes in from the north. This is a storm system you don't want to mess with. Take all the precautions you need to before the conditions become too bad. Now, in addition to the winter weather aspect of this storm, we're also dealing with the poten potential for severe weather, okay? Let's go ahead and look at some of the latest lightning data. And we already have severe thunderstorms erupting over portions of central and northern Texas. Fortunately, most of these cells aren't tornadic in nature, but they do have the potential for damaging winds. In fact, let's go ahead and go through some of the latest storm prediction center outlooks. And as you can see, the latest day one outlook, and this is valid through 6 a.m. tomorrow, does have a slight risk up for much of central Texas. And the main threats for the overnight and morning hours will be the possibility of significant hail. We have a 15% area outlined. And we also have a 5% outlook for wind. Now, this threat is going to increase as we go into the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. And this is the latest day two outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. We have a slight for portions of eastern Texas and much of the lower Mississippi Valley. And here is their 15% categorical probabilities. Now, on the next several charts, I'm going to show you a bunch of different severe weather parameters. And this is going to be for the noon and early afternoon hours for tomorrow afternoon. So let's go ahead and look at the GFS. This is, again, 12 o'clock tomorrow. We have a deepening surface low over the Oclitex area with warm temperatures, you know, surface temperatures in excess of 70 degrees along the Gulf Coast. And we also have surface dew points of the mid to upper 60 range across much of the lower Mississippi Valley. Now, the wind shear profiles are looking fantastic for supercell activity with surface to 500 millibar bulk shear parameters in upwards of 60 to 80 knots. So the shear is really going to be ridiculous. If there's going to be a severe weather outbreak, you need a lot of wind shear. 
wind shear in this case is not a problem. There is more than enough wind shear. If anything, the only limiting factor is going to be instability. This is a look at the latest CAPE forecast, and all of the strongest CAPE or the highest values are well into the Gulf of Mexico. With all that being said, however, there is about 250 to 500 joules per kilogram along the immediate Gulf Coast, especially in southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Now, during springtime setups, you often would like to see CAPE in the 500 to 1,000 plus range, although during wintertime severe weather outbreaks, a lot of times you can have a wind high vertical wind shear profile and very low CAPE and still get a pretty significant severe and even tornado outbreak. This is a bit too meager for anything too significant to develop, although I must say that sometimes the models do underdo the CAPE, so nevertheless, this will be an area to watch tomorrow afternoon for the potential for isolated tornadoes across Louisiana and Mississippi. And even if that were to not occur, we still have a very strong risk of damaging wind gusts. Again, this is the latest look at the forecast lifted index values, and we have a very narrow edge of instability just ahead of the squall line as it begins to exit out of Louisiana and move into Mississippi during the late afternoon hours. Uh, what's interesting to note is that at 700 millibars, of course, we have a very saturated profile early on in the afternoon hours, but then we begin to have a strong dry punch coming out of the Mexican plateau across lower Texas and into Louisiana, and this will only act to enhance the, the threat for damaging wind gusts, especially along that squall line in the afternoon hours. Here is the latest forecast sounding for an area just northeast of Hattiesburg, Mississippi for tomorrow afternoon. And before that squall line approaches, as you can see on the sounding, that there is a strong veering of winds with an incredible 850 millibar low-level jet in excess of 50 to 55 knots. And as you can see, those low-level winds veer from the southeast and the low levels to near the surface to at about southwest wind direction at around 700 millibars. And as you can see, we have a strong turning of the hodograph, which is indicative of very strong wind shear profiles. So this is definitely an area to watch in terms of any type of tornado action. And in fact, the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi, has given southern Mississippi the highest risk for tornado potential. You can see that quite clearly on the latest graphic cast from the Weather so Service office in that location. And as you can see, areas like Meridian, Hattiesburg, and Brookhaven are in the middle of that highest threat for tornado probabilities. Um, nevertheless, we don't expect tornadoes to be the main Damaging parameter tomorrow, again, it's supposed to be the heavy winds, strong winds in excess of 60 to 80 miles per hour. That's going to be your main threat. But nevertheless, even the potential for damaging winds exists beyond those thunderstorm areas because many of these uh, areas in Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama are already under wind advisories. So you're going to have wind gusts in excess of about 45 miles per hour even outside of severe thunderstorms. So please pay attention to the weather tomorrow if you live in these areas. And especially if you live in the Midwest and o Ohio Valley area, be prepared for that winter storm that's going to be coming through over the next day or so. So come back and visit us again at 28storms.com, and we'll have more updates in the immediate future. Thank you.